Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Maria Valletta, and we are at Eastern Marketing's beautiful outdoor showroom. I am with corporate chef for Woodstone Home, Ann Rudorf, and vice president of sales, her handsome assistant, Phil Eaton. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I know that you're making a ton of fabulous recipes for us in this beautiful Woodstone yes, oven, so let's get to it. Tell me yeah. what you're making, Ann. Okay. Well, we're going to start off with pizza. Actually, I'm going to start off with just throwing a little appetizer in, which is fun. First of all, it's um, it's not just a pizza oven, so we're going to be showing a lot of things out of here. So maybe before your guests come over, you want to throw this in. It's just an olive mix with a little olive oil, some fresh herbs. It's we'll always nice to have around. something to start everyone off with as you're cooking. Right. So we'll stir, give that a little stir. We're going to put that in the doorway where it cooks at a little bit different temperature. So this is a stone hearth oven. <gasps> Look this at the way those stone... doors open. You move that side and this side moves. Yes. I'm impressed. Yeah. This is the, um, the home line of the corporate uh, company Woodstone, which has many of the restaurant that you probably are aware of, uh, Wolfgang Puck, California Pizza Kitchen. Absolutely. So Woodstone Home is the same um, oven, but designed for the homeowner. So I can own it. You can own it. <laughs> There's five different models. This is the next to the smallest. But they are the same stone hearth oven. It's the same high density ceramic stone that cooks everything so quickly. So this is gonna cook a little cooler up in the front. We're gonna put that there. Then I'm gonna start a pizza. It really we'll goes we'll start deep out. back there. So you've got a lot yeah, of room so for cooking there, a lot of there's things. A, there, there's a temperature range. It's probably about 700 degrees on the floor in the back there. And it's probably cooking more at about 375 up in the front where the olives are. Is that are. all? It feels hot. <laughs> I know, it is very hot. Well, that's one of the reasons we have the glass doors on because these can be installed indoors or outdoors. A lot of people will put them in their homes inside and then they can cook all year round in them. People, that's a great idea. People that, that love food, love to cook, that have chef ambitions and, and are foodies, they fall in love with our ovens. Not just because of the look and, and the things that they can do, but all the different foods that can cook. You'll see Ann do many different things today from appetizers to even desserts. So it's indoors and it's outdoors. And the doors on the front, you use them for both indoor and outdoor? Yes, especially indoors because the, the ovens generate a lot of heat. You cook with a high heat in our ovens. The stone, the stone in our ovens is anywhere from two inches to four inches thick. So there's a lot of thermal mass. So it has a lot of heat in it. And every chef wants high heat. They want a lot of heat and they want to be able to cook their food really quickly. You'll see how quickly the pizza's cook in about, about, about three or four minutes. So the high heat's great for this pizza that she just put in, which I saw a little basil, a little mozzarella. Yes, classic pizza margarita, basil, tomato, mm. mozzarella, a little extra virgin olive oil. And the glass doors inside keep, keep that heat from radiating out and, and playing cook the chef. <laughs> That's a great idea because you, you do get hot when you're moving around in the kitchen. Are you game for? What's next for, for us? For making a pizza? Okay, I'll give it a shot. Okay, follow I have me. To say that we're dipping it in flour. I've never done it really correctly. Okay, we're just gonna let gravity do the work. Okay. Just keep sort of pulling it and letting it fall. Phil made the dough, so it's excellent. You made the dough. It's coming I did. Into I made a the circle. dough all by myself. It happens pretty into... quickly. <laughs> There's an entire recipe library on our website, so people can go to our website. They can they can do the recipes that they see made during the show. Woodstonehome.com. Woodstonehome.com. Woodstonehome Woodstonehome there's mm -hmm. there's a photo gallery there that shows all kinds of, of different installation ideas. Eastern Marketing is our distributor in, on the East Coast from Maine to Virginia, uh, and and they they do a fantastic job, and they they use their oven in in their showroom here all the time, and the designers come in and they love it because they see the stone, the facading that you can do. People get very creative. They can do tile, they can do brick, they can do stone. There's any number of So you can finishes. customize it Absolutely, to make yeah. it look just right for your home and your outdoor location. Yep. Stay tuned for more from Eastern Marketing. We now return with more from Chef Ann Rudolph. I see bubbles. Yes, it's done. Three Ooh. minutes about, wasn't that? Three minutes. That's the so. Watch out. power of high heat. Things are very hot coming out of the oven. Rest it on a screen. Does that look like a classic pizza margarita to it you? It looks so, so Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beautiful classic pizza. That's the wonderful thing about the Woodstone oven, is you get all the results that you get out of your favorite restaurants, you can do right, at your, right in your home. And uh, it can be customized, and you can get the larger one. You can see that online, correct? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Our, our larger mountain series ovens are the more traditional round 
uh, style ovens that you see in the in the larger commercial applications. And we have a number of people that that they are so committed to food and and their cooking that they they actually want a larger larger oven because they do huge amounts of entertaining. They have caterers come in and, and cook. They hire uh, personal chefs like like Anne to come in and and do cooking for them for events and for parties. It's I'd a, love to hire Anne and you for have, my event. You have more um, <laughs> cooking zones available in those larger ovens too. Yes. Yep. You know, so you could be searing things very hot in the back and baking something in front. Be How great for Thanksgiving dinner. Well, let's Good. take a look. I think they're, they're fine. They're just kind of roasting away and absorbing those flavors. Another pizza here. Yes, got so this prosciutto. one just kind of a seasonal pizza with prosciutto, fresh ricotta, mm. nectarines, and parmesan. I like the two types of cheese there. And I always like a little bit of sweetness with my prosciutto. It's such a nice balancing yeah, flavor. Yeah, the sweet and salty works really well here. So let's throw this one in. Our next one's going to be the kid-friendly macaroni and cheese pizza, which is my daughter's oh, favorite. Is it? Yes. So did she invent that or did you? No, actually it was a customer who invented it. Really? Yeah. And they um, emailed me and said, this is my new favorite pizza. So I tried it out, put it on a blog, and it was uh, kind of an instant hit. Very successful. Yeah. That's fun. Okay, so with that, we're going to start out with mozzarella. Then we're going to do cooked elbow macaroni. So cook it first, mm -hmm. spread it on top. <laughs> this is every kid's dream. It is. This is this is every kid's dream. So what did you just put on top? I put there? on creme fraiche. So it's directional cooking. Did you notice how the pizza got cooked closer towards the back? Yeah. I, I think of it like roasting a marshmallow. Okay. You so know, you gotta... the side closer to that flame yep. is going to get darker first, and then you rotate it 180 degrees and finish it on the other side. Easy enough to do. So see, there's our brown. Move that one over there and finish it. Wow. And then let's. I still throw can't our believe that you can cheese. have one of these inside. That's what's really exciting. But then again, you see them in restaurants, like you were talking about, you know, California Pizza Kitchen, Wolfgang Puck, and you know, a lot of these celebrities are big fans of your, of your and product. That's how we started in the in the home market. Was the chefs that were using our ovens in the restaurants wanted them for their homes. And then people that were eating at their restaurants, they were calling us. Because, because if you look on the, on the arches of the oven, we etch our name through the arches of, of every oven. People would go to their restaurant and they would see Woodstone. They would search us on one. the web. And they would, they would call us and say, I want one of those ovens. I ate at Wolfgang Puck's place and the pizza was phenomenal. I want to do that in my house. And that's how we started with, with residential. Already, we so have we cool it on the, out of this oven. We cool it on the screen so that it doesn't um, steam if you put it directly on the cutting board. Soggy. Then all that work you did to get that beautiful crispy crust is going to kind of sog out. That's why takeout pizzas are, uh, go into that cardboard uh, box of death. I know. Death. <laughs> so I we know. Let it if you don't eat it there, then yeah. or make it at home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so our mac and cheese pizza. I didn't put the cheddar on yet. Oh, we're going to add cheddar it to it, too. So it gets nice and creamy. I'm gonna, it, so it's gonna cook like about two thirds of the way through, I would say. Okay. And then we're gonna pull it out and put on the cheddar cheese. And then instead of you know bubbling up and browning like you think of your mozzarella on the top, yep. hopefully we'll get more of a sauce so it really looks Ooh, like macaroni, macaroni and, cheese. and cheese. Great. And I see pans in the oven. So. So you preheated your pans in there. Yeah. And look at this, anything that spills, it just burns off. So it's self-cleaning. That's a good really? thing to know. It's uh -huh. really easy to clean. Just let it carbonize the scrapes right hey, off. You tell a woman it's self-cleaning. <laughs> that means you're cleaning That's yourself, yeah. Well, <laughs> usually. <laughs> okay, this is another fun appetizer. This is dates stuffed with feta, feta. and mint. And, and then mint. wrapped in prosciutto. And then my skillet is nice and hot here. I'm just going to pop those in there. You hear that sizzle when sizzle. it hits yeah. the, the preheated skillet. Those are going to be done Makes a big shortly. Difference. Okay, our mac and cheese pizza is done. See how it's nice and kind of yep. yummy, cheesy? I know you need one of these. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to do a steak. Okay. Oh, that's the best part. That's my favorite part. So that, that uh, sizzle skillet has been getting hot in there. I salted the steak. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on it. Oh, this looks cheesy this good. It's a very, very versatile oven oh, and absolutely. way to cook. Very quickly. And look how, you know, your guests have been here 15 minutes. They've already eaten three pizzas and some olives, and you're putting the rest of the meal in the oven. And it's fun to cook in. People, people have a lot of fun cooking in our oven. Well, it's, it's a showpiece, and it's, it's exciting. So um, 
with the steak, what, what kind of cutter you're using today? I'm using a ribeye. A ribeye, a little mm -hmm. salt and pepper, olive oil. I'm going to push it way back to the flame where it's nice and hot. One of the phrases that I hear Ann and, and, and our other corporate chefs use all the time is less is more. But do you yeah. notice there's, there's not huge amounts of, of flavorings, there's not huge amounts of rubs and marinades going on in here because the oven is such an environment, it's, it's really hot in there. So every food has natural sugar in it. Yes. So when you put it into the oven, you throw heat at it from okay. all four sides, you caramelize the natural sugars in the food, and you'll see that steak will be one of the best steaks you've ever tasted with just salt, pepper, and olive oil. Stay tuned for more from Chef Ann Rudolph. We now return with more from Eastern Marketing. Our dates are done. Now you can use real wood with this oven too, correct? You can, you can. Uh, any of the ovens are available in straight wood burning or, or gas or a combination of wood and gas. Like this oven, every once in a while, we'll, we'll build a little fire off to the side there to get some of that smoky flavor going and, and some of that aroma out, out into the area of people People want to get that, that smoke flavor and aroma out there. How's our steak doing, Ann? Well, look at that. You see how well, it sizzled as soon as it hit that pan, right? But yes. You see how it's sizzling on top as well? There's it's like that same bubbles, top even on... heat that is bubbling the top of the cheese on your pizza. Yeah. It does the same thing to your steak. So the beauty of cooking proteins in this oven is that it's high heat from all directions without moisture loss. You could put a steak on a barbecue and the moisture is going up the top and you flip it over and you're losing it. You put it here, it's pushing all the moisture to the center. So, so it, it condenses to be super juicy. Yeah, so that's the, that's the key with a lot of this cooking, why it's so successful. Wow, look at that browning. Get that beautiful sear and all the moisture stays in that protein. It'll be the juiciest steak you've had. So we're going to pull that. I'm just going to put it on one of these boards right here for now, I think. Can we bring the pan out just a little bit so that we mm -hmm. can get a good look at that? Wow. That's beautiful. These tools are essential, obviously. Oh, you don't yeah. want to be trying to pull things out. Which is why they're handy and you've got the hooks on your side to just grab and pull because mm -hmm. you use them a lot. Uh huh. Okay, let's do the cedar plank salmon. Moving on to fish. Yes. I so can't I, believe it. Everything. I soaked, I soaked the board, the cedar plank, mm -hmm. for a couple of hours. I'm going to put a little olive oil on the salmon. So is our steak done now? Yeah, well, it's continuing to cook. Too. Yeah, that pan is super hot. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got an orange and juniper rub for the salmon. So it's a little bit of fine orange zest, crushed juniper berries, which mm -hmm. you can just do in the coffee grinder. Yep. Or a great salt and spice pepper grinder. and sugar. So the salmon's going to go into the oven and goes with, salmon. with the cedar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that little bit thicker side in. Okay. Closer to the heat. We, we can do the it. asparagus. You can do overnight braises in the oven. You can pre prepare a pork shoulder or, or a, large, a large loin of beef, put it into some in cast iron with some liquid and, and other things, turn the oven off after, it, after you're done cooking for the day, and, and, and then you can tuck that right around the corner of the doorway and it'll braise overnight. You come in in the morning to a beautifully prepared overnight braise of pork shoulder or, or, or beef loin. It's, yeah, it's, fantastic. it's fabulous. Sounds like you you're a bit me? of a chef yeah. yourself, Phil. Can you hear the cedar plank? Yes. Look at that. So that was just minutes. <laughs> I know. And this asparagus was, that was just about a minute. Wow. Vegetables are really a, sort of the unsung hero of the oven as far as I'm concerned because they cook at high heat without moisture loss. You know, it's one of the things that Woodstone realized early on in our existence. It's really about the food. Okay, now I'm going to do the Brussels sprouts. Okay. Same hot pan. Just gonna throw them in there. I can really smell that sweetness and from the cedar plank. I know, isn't that incredible? Also, just so so, so you can know, you reuse this I, had, or no? I had these available just in case there was a little flare up. So oh. it's kind of a good tip. I was gonna ask you, can you reuse these or no? Because they're oh, you could probably reuse that one. Okay. Usually not. So these are gonna get a little salt and pepper. I'll let you do a little pepper mill for just me. Just the leaves. If, if you're doing another piece yeah, of another piece of salmon, you could you could probably reuse Brussels that. Leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Careful, right. the pan's hot. Ready to go. Okay, in they go. But I have this nice fennel and citrus salsa. Looks like you've got orange, grapefruit. Yes, orange, fennel, navel orange. Chives. Fennel, chives, uh-huh. Little olive oil, salt and pepper. How's that look? Look at those. They brown up so nice and you're not so deep you, frying them, which is great. No, they were just rubbed very lightly with olive oil. That's what I, I really like. I used Super to healthy. do them, before I had an oven, I used to do them in a, 
in a pan with you know maybe a quarter inch of olive mm -hmm. oil and throw them in there essentially frying them but this you use a minimal amount of olive oil but you get the same effect and brussels sprouts yay yeah or nay Actually, men are indifferent to them sometimes or I they love either brussels. love them or hate them, I love them. Oh, my daughter love won't them. my, my daughter eat love any them. they she eats them up she won't eat any other ones they're my favorite lemon zest to brighten those up and a little aleppo pepper from Aleppo, Syria. It's kind of a, it's really pretty for one thing, and it's a subtle heat and almost a little bit nutty. It's delicious. Goes it's, very well with Brussels It's amazing. Sprouts. I mean, just how, how long have we been cooking? And <laughs> this entire feast that we have created. And this is a green goddess sauce. In just a half hour? For the asparagus. All right. And fairly easy cleanup. Okay, the steak. Put that over here. A little blue cheese on top, huh? Yeah, why not? Gild the lily a bit. You are using a lot of very simple ingredients, and I just know that there's going to be a ton of flavor when we go to taste all of this. Perfect temperature. Stay tuned for more from Eastern Marketing. We're back with more from Eastern Marketing. Let's do dessert. Dessert? Yes. We have dessert? We forget dessert? about dessert. Yes. In the oven? Absolutely. Got to have a little flambe, right? So we're going to do bananas foster, brown sugar. I haven't had bananas foster, oh, I, need a I think, in Thank you. a couple years. <laughs> Melt the butter. OK. Add brown sugar. Caramelization is one of the other things that happens very nicely in this oven. So we're going to get that caramelized. We're also going to add ground ginger, salt, and um, a little bit of cayenne, just a little kick, the Ooh. unexpected surprise that kind of goes in with the ginger. bananas foster? That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I like So we'll get that in there until it starts to caramelize. The one thing you don't want to do is reach in there without a, a mitt, right? Yes. Yeah, have you that, made that mistake? You, I, I have. Yeah, I have the scars to prove it. We you all don't have. Wanna, yeah, that's why the tools are so important. The, the, and the so handling yeah, placed. Handling plates. The the peel kind of becomes an extension of your hand. It, it, yeah. You can move anything around in the oven with it. So it's it's a it's a great little tool. And we have other tools too, like the brushes for cleaning. Okay. If something really got stuck, you would use that one. Does it take a while and to they, get used to the whole? Not movement? really. It's, it's really simple. And if you were burning wood, then you'd need the shovel for the ashes. Oh. So remember, these can be wood fired as well. Yep. I remember Phil mentioning that. You need a spoon? Yes. Okay, let's get the bananas in there. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And now comes the best part. <laughs> we'll just let those warm up Gotta for a second. let everybody see so that. So look at that, that looks caramelizing great. of the sugar just took a second. Wow. I didn't think bananas foster was actually that easy to make. It is in a wood stone. <laughs> okay, I think it's hot. Here's are we gonna part. flame it? We are. A little rum. <laughs> Come on. There Woo! we go. See, there as soon as go. you stick your hand in, then it flames, <laughs> <Of course>. right? <laughs> so look at that. Flamingly good. Flamingly good. Now we'll scoop some ice cream. Oh, want? this is too much bowls? fun. You want it in the bowls? Yeah. Starters, appetizers, meat, yeah. fish. From start pizza, to finish. Mm -hmm. veggies, the all-important veggies. Yeah. And dessert. Absolutely. Sometimes we do um, some little souffles right up in the front. Those work really well, too, because you can imagine the souffle action it's with that kind rise. of heat that's just going to draw those eggs right up so there. So beautifully. All right. Yummy, caramely goodness. That's the ultimate Sunday. Ultimate Sunday, excuse me. That is. And there we go. That is so good. Look at that. Smell how sweet that is. You gotta eat this fast or it's gonna melt. That's true. <laughs> I can't That's wait true. to taste it all. All right. Everyone, grab a fork. Okay. All right. Yeah. No Here problem. we go. Charge. <laughs> I'm Although start with the with pizza, the Brussels sprouts, you go this ahead. Is my favorite. I'm going to start with the dates. I am really eyeing 
the margarita mm. pizza. Ha ha ha. Got a piece. Look at that. Mm. That to me, Phil, is what makes a really good pizza. You it's always gotta good. look at the bottom. Mm. Oh yeah. Really good. The brown of that crust. It's fantastic. Mm. Okay. Yes. What else? You have to try one Asparagus. of the Asparagus. I'm a veggie girl. Gotta do my vegetables. There you go. Mmm. Oh, Very this nice. is super sweet. Mmm. And then, you know, I've been waiting for that steak. Here you go. Oh, convenient. A knife. A Thank knife. you. Imagine that. Okay, I'm gonna get this nice big juicy piece right here with a little bit of the blue cheese. It smells wonderful. It's good. Mmm. Oh, talk about juicy. Mmm. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It really is a big difference. We don't even do our steaks at home on the barbecue anymore. Mm. That is just fantastic. What a beautiful spread. Mm -hmm. I love the colors. Chef Rudolph, yeah. you, you did an amazing job. And Phil, I can't thank you enough for letting us enjoy this beautiful Woodstone pizza today. And a big thank you to Eastern Marketing for letting us take over their outdoor mm -hmm. patio, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, thank Hope you. to see you soon on the show. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. Cook something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you've loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts.